as part of the sugar mama lifestyle love routine i'm including profiles to say interviews with people who have had a huge impact on my life both personally and professionally These people have an amazing level of energy enthusiasm for life that is just um, it's contagious. People have driven me to achieve, you know, bigger and better things. They've been motivated, they've kept me inspired, and they've opened my eyes and heart and good things from a different perspective. Really contributed to my personal growth. And I wanted to share their adventures, their advice, their experience, their values with you because it might help you, you know, in your personal journey through life. Because what I want to do is obviously inspire everyone to have a better, happier, and more fulfilling life. People that I've profiled, it's obviously they've achieved great things and great successes, but it's not about what they've achieved, but to me it's the way that they've gone about it. This person I've profiled is Georgia Bay from the Grace Tales. Now the Grace Tales is an incredibly chic, sophisticated, polished and refined website dedicated to mothers around the world. And Georgie comes from an incredible background working in high-end fashion and one of the companies she worked for was Vogue. Georgie is probably one of the most authentic, grounded um, people I know. She has a fierce level of determination and an admirable work ethic that started from a very, very young age. She has travelled around the world, she's worked in Australia and in Dubai, and has some very, very valuable advice on transitioning to an online business, um, both a retail business and obviously like an online magazine through the Grace Tales. Her successes have been incredible. She has just gone from strength to strength and the whole way through, she has remained incredibly open, honest and grounded. You can't help but feel inspired and motivated around her. And it is with great honor that I share with you this interview with one of my dearest and closest friends, Georgie Abay. My very close friends is Georgia Bay from The Grace Tales. Georgie has had an amazing journey in her career. She's also a mother, a wife, and has two businesses on the go at the moment. So I wanted to share everyone to meet Georgie and to hear her journey from working in fashion to launching her two amazing online businesses. I think she's got a lot of very valuable information to share. It all sounds a bit chaotic, two businesses and, and two children. Two kids, yeah. <laughs> and a husband and two dogs. Yes, two dogs. So, okay, you had like the dream career, like girls, you know, aspire to be what you've achieved. You know, working in Vogue, working for Harper's Bazaar, living in Dubai, um, you know, meeting and interviewing celebrities, supermodels, um, you know, Tom Ford, like incredible people. And from that, you've then gone on and launched something so incredibly amazing and it's got a huge future ahead of it. Like, can you talk, share with me the experience of Vogue, began, where it began, like what you learnt, like where your inspiration came from, everything. <laughs> yes. Um, God, it's sort of spanning, well, I'm 34 now, mm. well, no, 34 next month. Um, so I guess it sort of started when I was a teenager. I was just sort of absolutely fashion obsessed, which I know so many <laughs> girls are, mm. um, and I went to quite an academic school, and I wouldn't say I was the most academic person, yeah. I think um, <laughs> I think my dad was quite surprised when I actually got a good result in the HSC, um, but I just remember each month I was just obsessed with Dolly, Girlfriend, all those magazines, and I would go to the news agency the day that they would come out, and I would, I would pretty much spend all my pocket money. And um, my dad had an account at the news agency, which he ended up closing because <laughs> I started putting magazines on the account, which he quickly um, shut down. Yeah. But um, I, I always worked very hard. I worked since I was 14, um, so I would spend all my money on fashion magazines. And, and I guess that I was just incredibly passionate about it. Mm. But when you go to a very academic school, you sort of fashion isn't a career that's sort of talked about or celebrated. Mm. Um, it's not exactly encouraged. I no, it's not something that you should in their minds you should aspire to be. It really yeah. wasn't and I guess um, I, what I, the one thing I had, I wouldn't say I was academic, but I had determination and um, my mum was always a very determined woman, she is a very determined woman and she gave me her determination and, mm. and she kind of really made me believe that I could do anything because I think from school I didn't, I wouldn't have thought I was one of the more promising students at the school I went to. Um, but I think one thing I want to teach my daughters is that it doesn't matter how well you do at school. You have to. I really want them to believe in themselves. And, mm -hmm. and um, so I kind of I left school and I, I did a degree and um, in what did you study? Um, media and communications mm -hmm. at, at Sydney University. And um, and during that time I started doing work experience at a publishing company. And I guess that's the one thing like you have to do work experience. You 
it's it's so important and it's the best education that you'll get. So you worked your guts out for free? Worked my guts out for free. I did things like get people Diet Coke. I remember one woman asked me to um, turn her computer on because her back was sore. Like, you, I oh. did. <laughs> Were there times where you felt I wanted to like stuff this, I don't want to do it? Yes, but I was so determined and I was like, okay, I just need to, like my first job in publishing was $12 an hour and um, wow. that was after I did the, the free work. Mm. Um, but, you know, over the, over the early years of, of my career, I worked for Nylon Magazine, which um, has closed down in Australia, but it's a huge magazine in the States, um, for over a year for free and I, I did so much work for free. Um, but I started working at this publishing company um, at, um, when I was at uni and then after uni that turned into a full-time job and it wasn't glamorous, I was working on like a sailing publication and, um, but I sort of always... <laughs> oh my god, it's so not you. <laughs> it's so not me, it was, it was not um, mm. glamorous at all. Um, but you did it though, because you did it were prepared to get the experience you have and to, training and, exactly. and knowledge. And, um, and then, I mean even back then, I was 21 I think, I was sending emails to the editor of Vogue um, I was setting up my own little photo shoots on the beach and sending them to the fashion director at Vogue oh asking for a job and it's quite yeah. embarrassing looking back because I don't know how good the pictures were. <laughs> um, but I, I would sort of constantly email editors and ask for jobs and I think that's that's really important. No matter how many no's you get and you'll get so many, just keep going because yeah. someone will say yes. And, mm. and for me it's sort of over the next five years I ended up... Um, I was freelance writing and that was just again emailing editors and I worked in Dubai um, for two years which was incredible. I launched Harper's Bazaar Arabia, I was one of the um, people so on the launch team. Just launching a magazine in a, in a country, like an, what, that would have been an experience it in was itself. And amazing. You know, obviously a different culture, a different look, a different style. Like Yeah, it was, it was incredible and I think working abroad if you can is just is so important. Mm. Um, Australia is it's a small market and it's hard to get a foot in the door so if you can go overseas I think that's really important and within three months of coming back from Dubai I um, I got a job at Vogue and I had been emailing the then editor Kirsty Clements for two years straight sort of saying hi it's me again she never wrote back. <laughs> like a stalker. Like a stalker pretty much <laughs> I pretty much stalked her for two years and and then one day she wrote back and mm. And I didn't know what the interview was and I went in and the job was um, fashion news editor. I thought I was sort of going in for the fashion assistant job or something. Yeah, an amazing job like that. It was incredible. And I was 27 at the time. Um, and I got the job and it sort of, it, it just went from there. I mean, I, I've worked so incredibly hard over the past decade. Um, what are the key things you learnt from working for an amazing organisation like Vogue? I think don't have an attitude, you can't have an attitude. Like I, I still do coffee runs, I mean it's different now, I run my own business, but I do coffee runs, I tape shoes, I'm... You're not afraid to get down on No, I'll get down on the ground and work, yeah. Work. I'll do anything and I've never been precious about that and um, I think that's really important, sort mm -hmm. of a can-do attitude. Um, determination is really, really important. Yeah. And also, I never, you know, the fashion industry can be hard and it can be bitchy, um, but I never, it was never my life. Yeah. And so I never sort of, it never bothered me and I never... You never, never let it consume you no, or change you. Or try to be someone mm. that I wasn't. I genuinely loved fashion and I loved what I did, but I didn't, yeah, I didn't sort of let the bitchiness get to me. Mm. Um, and I do believe that nice people um, can sort of achieve a lot. Yeah. Um, the editor, the current editor of Vogue, um, Edwina McCann, I worked for her for sort of four or five years and um, she's the nicest person in the fashion industry mm. and it was such a pleasure working for her and I think she's a, a great example that you can be nice and still get ahead. Yeah. Because yeah. um, so it is quite ruthless. It's totally and then, ruthless. From, you know, books I've read and, you know, stories I've heard through the grapevine, like it sounds like it can, it can be at times backstabbing. Like, how did you rise above that and try and be the bigger person all the time and keep that long-term vision? I think... Like there, there were definitely moments where I sort of was ready to sort of quit because it, it can be really bitchy and I was bullied. Um, I was, I was bullied um, earlier on um, working in fashion and that was, you know, that still stays with me but I made some great friends along the way. Um, um, Sigourney Cantelow worked at Vogue um, and sort of she was an ally and we yeah. sort of Came really together. Yeah, yeah. supported mm. each other and I think, I think I just found great women and sort of we supported each other and then if anything did happen that was upsetting you'd sort of have someone to talk to and sort of sort of 
yeah, talk through it. Sometimes it's just even just a vent. Yeah, just yeah. a vent. And, mm. um, but again, it wasn't my life and I've got um, wonderful friends and family around me and, and that was that's what's ultimately important to me. Yeah. So don't let the bitchiness get to me. Okay. <laughs> okay well, when you had your um, daughter Arabella, um, you like you had like a gut feel that you were, had an idea but you, and I remember you sort of sat talking about this idea you had and I initially didn't really understand it but like how did that um, grow, how did you come up with the idea like and how did you slowly exit like why did you slowly exit Vogue to, to um, the Grace Tales and then obviously onto a Atelier Child like talk me through that phase, that chapter. It kind of just sort of happened, I feel like things in life they sort of unravel organically and um, I loved my job at Vogue. I got to travel around the world to fashion shows and it, it was meet amazing good. people. <laughs> meet amazing people, interview, you know, Christopher Bailey, Nicholas Jeskier, like it was it was incredible. But it was sort of something I left behind in my twenties because I became a mother when I was thirty and um, and suddenly like everything changes. You just mm. you cannot give as much as you did prior to your work because you have this huge new priority and mm. um, and so, I mean, the, the Grace Tales happened because I couldn't find anything. I still loved Vogue and all the other fashion publications, but I wanted something that was sort of targeted at mothers, um, but that was still quite glossy and, and fashionable, because everything was sort of quite unfashionable, which, I mean, motherhood gets very yeah. messy and <laughs> Lots of not vomit, glamorous. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of vomit and um, smart. Um, we don't talk about that on the Grace Tales, but <laughs> make it all look very yeah. glossy. Mm. Um, and so I went back to Vogue and um, after Arabella was born, but I was working part time and I just found it really hard um, that I was the deputy editor then and it's a very demanding job um, and it just wasn't something that I could sustain. I would get home and Arabella would be asleep and I sort of felt like I had this baby at home that I wasn't seeing and I didn't feel balanced. So I sort of, well, I fell pregnant quite quickly again um, and I knew after I had another baby that I just could not go back to um, working for Vogue. It was something that was incredible in my 20s, but I just, I, I, I couldn't do the job It's like that anymore. chapter had closed. It had yeah. closed. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do ballet classes with Arabella on a Thursday afternoon. I want to take her swimming on a Tuesday. And, and I can, I can, mm -hmm. I can, I work still full time, yeah. um, but I, I dictate my hours and the flexibility that I have um, is incredible. And I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't change it. I, I don't even miss all the amazing trips because yeah. you know everything has an end date nothing lasts forever and also like you've got something you're building a brand and a business that's your own it's your exactly. own you know it's like another baby it's you know yeah. you, what you put in is what you get out and I mean what you've achieved with the Grace Tales is absolutely incredible Excellent. and it's the most beautiful website and the thing is it's actually incredible it's an incredibly honest website even mm. though it is obviously high, very it's glossy glamorous, there's and there's a glamorous. lot of honesty but in it if, the, you, if you sort of like look yeah. under all the glamour. And the profiles um, and obviously the way you write, like it's very genuine, it's very honest. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, I really believe by being honest, especially with motherhood and, and good friendships, like being able to say, yes, yeah. it is hard, yes, it is tired, yes, it's stressful. You know, you help support each other and you, you have to be honest. You know, you, you don't feel as, as alone. Yeah. You're like, okay, I'm not struggling. Other people struggle as yeah. well, or other people have similar challenges, and you can't help but feel inspired and, and positive and uplifted yeah. in, in flicking through the, you know, images and reading the stories of the profiles of, you know, the women wow. you've interviewed from around the world from so That's many wow. different backgrounds. Mm. Um, so, talk, tell me about, obviously, the Grace Tales and then how Atelier Child has come from that. Just thought, throw another business into the mix. Cause <laughs> just, just get, get busier. <laughs> you no, know, don't have much to do. Um, it's kind of weird. I feel like motherhood has given me quite an intense um, drive and, and energy. Like, I've never been more sleep deprived in my life. But, but also efficiency. efficient. You get efficient. Like, you, it, you've got this amount of time efficient. to get this stuff done. You make it happen. You make like, it happen. Yeah. And, and, and I love being a mum and... and mm -hmm. um, really important to me that um, you know I spend enough time with the kids and and they definitely come first but I love working and I've always loved working mm. and it's so Atelier Child was something that um, I, well my business partner and close friend Jess and I um, launched God last last year mm -hmm. um, it's been going sort of for about a year now and um, we had talked about doing a business together for a while and we used to research the market extensively and children's fashion, we felt that there was something missing, particularly in knitwear. So we created, it's quite a cool sort of fashion forward um, knitwear line and we recently expanded into things like denim and, um, and, and cotton. Um, 
and we're doing really, really well. We just um, our debut collection was picked up by Colette, which is the world, which is famous fashion, yeah, incredible concept. Yeah. <laughs> so that was really, really exciting. And I think when you are working so hard and trying to juggle everything, mm. when you yeah. get these these um, amazing things happen, it's mm. sort of, it really gives you a lot of energy. And, yeah, to, and to keep going and yeah, yeah. To keep going and, believe, and keep keep believing in yourself. Yeah. yeah. So life is so busy and crazy and and it's weird to think that I have left my magazine career behind because it was all I ever wanted to do. Motherhood really, it, it's just so incredible and I never I never imagined or expected how much it would make me rethink mm. my career and yeah. yeah. Okay, so what are the, you know, what are the big things that are coming up for the Grace Tales and Atelier Child? Well, um, I'm about to go to Paris next week um, and we are doing a trade show called Playtime Paris where um, we present um, the new um, winter collection to buyers from around the world mm -hmm. um, but we've got lots and lots of exciting things happen like my business partner was meeting with Lane Crawford this morning oh my goodness um, <laughs> we've got a collaboration with a really famous um, Australian artist Jeremy Bill um, who's based in New York um, so I'm really excited about the Chilia Child um, this year and then for the Grace Tales I've just recently relaunched the site so it looks pretty nice at the moment it was um it looks beautiful <laughs> we were, i was on it today with my intern and we were in like in awe oh, of it of how clean and nice and it's it's going through the grace tales as i've explained to you it's actually it's not something I, it's something i want to sit down on the sofa and absorb myself in because it's actually an experience it's like an online magazine which yeah. is kind of um mm. what we're trying to achieve um so it's sort of just got quite a few celebrity profiles coming up um we are expanding to the UK this year. I've launched a directory, a shop, so it's going to be quite a big year, and I'm um, really excited about it. And yeah, there's lots of amazing things happening. To get better at time management. <laughs> um, and my final question is: Okay, you work from home. Mm. Like, tell me how you try and focus, um, how you try and get things done. Like, why you chose to work from home um, with you know being around the girls, and you know where you get your inspiration from. I guess I really, my mum always worked from home, and I. I, my mum was such a present mum growing up and that was something that I'm so grateful for. She she was there every day to pick us up from school. She had afternoon tea ready for us every afternoon. Like she was incredibly caring and but I remember Your mum also worked as well though. She worked. She, worked. she, she wasn't a stay at home was, yeah, yeah, she mm -hmm. worked. She had a home office and I, so while I remember her being present, I would drive around with her. She was an interior she is an interior designer. I'd drive around with her you know, fabric samples all through the car. She would visit clients. She was up late in her office. I used to remember her working every night in the office. And so her work was, I was very much a part of her work. And, um, you know, I used to get impatient when she'd be sitting with a client for over an hour. But, you know, at least I was with her. And, yeah. um, and I really, she was an incredible mum. So I guess she was a role model. So working from home has always been something that I wanted to do after I became a mum. And, um, and, my little one who's 20 months is still at home so it is challenging mm -hmm. um we have um au pairs who live with us which is incredible and it's i wouldn't be able to work if mm -hmm. we didn't have um an au pair and um so that really helps but um it is hard because i'll often sort of start cleaning i'm a bit of a i love cleaning <laughs> <laughs> so i'll often start cleaning when i'm supposed to, that's if i'm trying to procrastinate <laughs> um but it is i love the flexibility of working from home and i don't mm -hmm. have to commute it's and when I when I sit down to work, and I've got mm. to get something done, I'll your work. I'll get it done. Okay. And, yeah. Mm. Well, thank you so much for sharing thank this. You I think me. Um, I think there's. I mean, even from me personally, I get so much um, inspiration and motivation from you. Like what you've achieved and what you've built, and the direction you're taking both businesses is just absolutely awe inspiring. Um, for anyone that's interested in starting up their own business and. Um, and you know leaning into doing something like this you know I hope you've got a lot out of hearing um, George's experience and advice and um, you know if just one couple of que last question I promise <laughs> is what would you know for, for girls or I shouldn't say girls for people who are thinking of you know starting their, their own website and online uh, magazine what are the I guess your two three tips of exiting the workforce like would you recommend that they start it up part-time or start as a hobby and lean into it rather than make you know quit their job and Dive I in, or that's exactly it. I started the Grace Towers when I was still working at Vogue. I couldn't commercialise it because mm. obviously that would have been a conflict of interest. Mm. Um, but I sort of tested the market and got some momentum, mm. and um, 
And so when I did finally exit Vogue, I knew that the Grace Towers could be a source of income for me. Mm. Um, and it's now, you know, it's now a commercial business. Um, so I really think you do need to test the, test test the market. It depends mm. what your financial situation is, mm. but most people, I imagine, would need to, um, would need to test the market. Mm. And, but I think the other thing is um, there's a sign in the Facebook office that says done is better than perfect. And I yeah. think that's, I always think about that because don't, you don't need to be too much of a perfectionist. Mm. Just, you know, just go for it and, yeah. and, and do it. And mm. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe. And I'm also going to make sure I tag um, Georgie's beautiful Instagram um, uh, page and Facebook page and of course the web, both websites for Atelier Child and the Grace Tales. So we'll catch you next time in Lifestyle Love. Ciao. Bye. <laughs>